The case of United States versus Hinckley brought an end to the influence of the model penal code upon insanity defense jurisprudence. Not because of any holding or dictum in the case, but because of the public reaction to the result. Hinckley tried to kill President Ronald Reagan. Hinckley's motive was to impress the actress Jodie Foster. She was not impressed, not favorably anyway. But Hinckley was acquitted by a jury given instructions in accord with the model penal code. Hinckley was immediately committed to a mental institution where he remained until his release 33 years later. There was an outcry anyway. In short order, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals disavowed Blake, Davis, and the Model Penal Code. A majority of psychiatrists now believe that they do not possess sufficient accurate bases for measuring a person's capacity for self-control or for calibrating its impairment. There is no objective basis for distinguishing between the impulse that was irresistible and the impulse not resisted, or between substantial impairment of capacity and some lesser impairment. Lyons effectively rolls the law of the circuit all the way back to McNaughton. The case of State versus Crenshaw introduces an issue that may have been worrying you already. The McNaughton rule speaks of the defendants not knowing what he was doing was wrong. Cases that follow McNaughton in the U.S. take this to mean a lack of capacity to tell right from wrong. What exactly does that mean? Crenshaw obeyed the command of his Muscovite faith yet his murder conviction is upheld. On his appeal, Crenshaw objected to this instruction. What is meant by the terms right and wrong refers to knowledge of a person at the time of a committing an act that he was acting contrary to law. Crenshaw knew he was not in conformity with human law, but he hearkened to God's law as interpreted by his Muscovite church, a church which appears to have no known address outside the confines of Crenshaw's lively imagination. The Crenshaw court found no fault in the instruction. Would it have mattered if Crenshaw's belief was the result of a direct command from God? In dictum, the Crenshaw court indicates it would have been a different case had God appeared himself to Crenshaw, the way Jehovah appeared to Abraham. Jehovah commanded Abraham to kill his son Isaac, and Abraham had every intention of complying. It was only by the intervention of one of Jehovah's angels that Isaac was spared. Had Abraham been charged in Washington state with attempted murder, what result? The Crenshaw dictum indicates a likely acquittal. Let's take stock. Under McNaughton, it is a defense if due to mental disease or defect, the defendant lacks what we can call moral capacity. She can't tell right from wrong. There is more to McNaughton, but let's focus on this part. Under Crenshaw, the defendant must show an incapacity to know what society considers to be wrong. The trouble Crenshaw took to conceal his crime showed he knew the wider society considered what he did to be wrongful. Crenshaw recognizes a deific decree exception, however, this did not apply to Crenshaw, who relied on the tenets of his religion. Finally, compare the Model Penal Code. The Model Penal Code leaves it to the states to decide how to define wrongness, but it adds a volitional prong to the insanity defense. The law here is, for some reason, still in flux. 
The Supreme Court decided a case, Kayla versus Kansas, in March 2020, that authorized the states to restrict the availability of the insanity defense even further than what we saw in Clark versus Arizona. We can look forward to further experimentation in the states. Well, that's all the time we have for this craziness. Have a great summer in place. And I'll see you when I see you in August, let's hope.